Welcome to the Y-Wing Helmet Tutorial. If you'd like to learn more about how to acquire this kit or how it was made, be sure to visit the links in the description. If you enjoy this content, smash that like button and subscribe. Let's get started on this kit. If you haven't seen the video that provides an in-depth look at all the individual parts, click on the link in the description to go check that video out. And we are building the orange visor version that uses these decals. Alright, let's jump right in. We're going to go ahead and start with the seam line cleaning on the helmet. It's very minimal seam line. It just goes from here to the bottom of the helmet. And I'm just going to go ahead and take a palm sander and sand that down. And if there's any kind of uh, little filling necessary, I'm just going to use a little bit of Bondo and give it a really quick sand. I'm going to use just a tiny bit of glazing putty across the seam line. Let this dry for about 10 to 15 minutes and then sand everything nice and flush. So I'm almost finished with this trimming. Only a little bit of that Bondo hung on where it was needed. Not very much was needed at all. And I'm just finishing up this sand with a sanding sponge. And you'll see later on that you don't need to get this area perfectly perfect because it's going to be covered up with this padding. Okay, I'm, I'm happy with this trim, and now I'm going to give this a base coat of flat white. I'm giving this a coat of matte clear, because we're going to be doing a lot of masking on this guy. I want it to be a very, very strong base coat. These parts were all produced from open face molds, which means they don't have any seams. But the bottom can stand to be trimmed a little bit. And I'm doing that with 60 grit paper. And I'm just raking the bottoms of these parts right across to make them nice and flush on the bottoms. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and primer these guys gray using Rust-Oleum Gray Primer. Real light coat so it doesn't build up and dries quick. I'm painting these four pieces semi-gloss black. These two pieces are sort of like a, a silvery green color. I'm going to base coat them in silver using, this one's called Italian Olive from Krylon. From a distance, I'm just going to kiss these with a little bit of this green color. Just give them a little bit of a green hue. The mic stock connector and the port piece are left primer gray. And so is the little piston. This guy, this disc, is not a shiny silver, it's a dull silver. So I'm using aluminum rust-oleum. Because I know from a lot of experience that this goes on sort of dull. And that's exactly what we want. I also use my oscillating sander. And I came in here and flattened out the inside of that hole. I'm using a color called Island Blue to paint these side parts here. Now I'm using silver to touch all these rivets. 
and make them all pop out. Now I'm using a micro brush and some testers silver to make all these rivets pop. And now it's all about the masking. There's light gray, there's dark grays, there's yellows. There's a lot of different colors going on. I'm starting with the dark gray. There's a band that goes across the ridge here that's a medium gray. So as you can see, I'm using automotive strip paint strip mask. You'll be using a lot of this pinstripe tape to get all these colors in place because this helmet is extremely curvy. There's no flat parts of this helmet. So everything needs to be masked on curves. I'm going to be airbrushing these gray colors, so I'm not too worried about masking off the entire helmet because I'll be able to control the spray pretty well. But you can see that I'm masking off for the medium gray at the top and the darker gray along this strip. I am custom mixing all my colors today. I'm using Tamiya flat black and flat white and I'm coming up with a medium gray and I'm going to be thinning this down with a little isopropyl alcohol. If you have mineral spirits that works fine too. And we're going to airbrush this guy. Okay, here we go with darker gray across this line. And across the bottom edge also. I darkened this tone just a tiny bit. I felt like it had to get a little bit darker and I'm pretty happy with where that's at. I can see a really big tone difference between that medium gray and this darker gray. And that same, a little bit darker than medium gray for inside of this pocket. This next color was a challenge. It's going to look really silly going on here, but I think in the end it'll work out because it'll be weathered several times. But I mixed red, orange, and a little bit of white. The end result of this color will be an ashy crimson color. So I know it seems really bright going on here right now, but it'll darken up as the weathering process happens. Here comes the last masked color. Yellow. Make sure that you're using a pale yellow. Don't use a, a bright, rich yellow. Use a very pale yellow. Okay, let's go ahead and attach with super glue the Yamaha button to the circuit board. Some of the helmets use the larger Yamaha button. This one is going to use this. And that whole assembly glues inside the hole. I ended up painting this piston a, uh, a silver color and that is going to glue right inside the pocket. The 80s port glues down inside of that recess and the microphone stem attachment right here. Here it is, all the colors applied. Looks really bright and this is all about to change though once we start the weathering process but first I am applying the optional decal set and that's all these guys. I'll show you how easy these are to apply. We're going to start by separating everything. You don't have to cut close to the edges because all of these are pre-weeded. They're already ready to apply. But we do need to separate these from the sheet. Make sure when cutting this guy out that you keep this little tan. There's a very light tan colored area. To apply your decals, I like to have a little container of soapy water. This is Dawn mixed with water. And I'm going to pre-treat the surface. 
I don't really need to do it for this. I'm just showing you technique right now. But I'm going to wet this down a little. I also have a squeegee on hand. You could just use a piece of plastic, a credit card, anything that's flat. I'm going to peel off my backing paper. Lay it down. And I've got a little bit of movement. I could slide this around till I like it the position. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, and just squeegee this down. I've got a little paper towel here to wick away some of the excess moisture. Really get that pressed down. And then peel away that translucent paper. Give it another press, and I'm done. For this graphic, I'm not going to bother putting any kind of soapy water down. There's so many small little pieces that are die cut on this. So I'm just going to apply it directly. Just make sure that all the parts come off on that wax paper. Get it into position. Beautiful, look at this. On the decal sheet, these are all in order. So I'm gonna label these so that they don't get mixed up. That's number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven position. I'm initially applying these very loosely. I'm not pressing them down yet. I just wanna make sure all my spacing is correct before I push these down into final position. Okay, I'm going to apply a little bit of heat directly through that wax paper to get this to soften up just a tiny bit so I can push it down flat. And that's enough. Don't peel the wax paper off too fast because you can tear that vinyl because it's still warm. There we go, look at this. These are switch cover plate screws. Flathead, little screws just from the hardware store. I pre-drilled holes for their locations. And this is just a small little anal detail I thought I would put on this helmet. So I've got two on this side. I'm gonna to touch those with silver because they look like they're silver. The rest of those are white. There's one right here, there's one here, there's one there. There's one here and one there. To start the weathering, I'm using Tamiya Smoke. I'm also going to be weathering with really translucent grays. And we're just going to go ahead and start. I've got some reference photos pulled up on my computer I can look at. So I'm going to go ahead and just start dirtying it up. It's all over the place. Each of these screws has a little dark halo. Next, I have a light gray, and I turn my regulator down, lower the air pressure a bit, so I've got a little bit more of a finer spray. I'm just going to come in here and break up 
this color, do a little bit more pre-shading before we start going aggressive with the dark colors. There's a lot of dark around this edge here. A lot of dark across this. I'm going to go ahead and start scratching this helmet up a little bit. You can see that there's, there's scratches all over this thing. And you can do that right now at this stage while this paint is still a little green. And start scratching it up. I'm not sure exactly where these all go, but I'm just showing you here on this little spot that it's really easy to rub some of this paint off and get these nice scratches. I'm painting a very faint green stripe, very, very subtle, and it fades really light here, a little darker here, and then it goes totally light to invisible to the other side. Real subtle, but that's what that looks like. I, I think it really adds a lot. This next color is straight black, but it's very thin. It's probably about... 80% ISO thinner and 20% black so I'm just gonna give everything just a little bit of a shading because those scratches aren't gonna show unless we've got some good contrast so everything gets a general tone down and then there's a few areas that are very dark like for example this area right here there's a lot of scratching, a lot of carbon scoring right there and down here. I know from looking at my reference shots that it's pretty dark here and across this edge and especially in here. And this whole line back here is very faded dark. Try not to overdo it though. I mean, I'm just I'm standing way back and just giving everything a slight tonage. This area in particular is really messed up with scratches. You can also do this with white paint, which is what I'll do eventually also, but I can just start showing myself where I'm going, just scraping the actual paint off. And then here, there's all kinds of scratches. We have all kinds of black mirror spots and dots all over this thing. We are not nearly finished weathering this. This is just the beginning. So back here, there's all kinds of dots and scratches everywhere. Just scrapes, just little dots, just mess this up. Now here's a really interesting spot. It, there's a dark area, so let me go ahead and just get this really dark, almost just black. And then there's scratches inside of it. And then there's a red coloring. It's almost like a Boba Fett helmet, the way the, the weathering is multicolored and multi-stages. So it's dark, you've got white scratches, and then there's red around where the white paint is missing. It's like just paint chipping. And I'm not trying... I'm using that initial color of gray that we first started with and I'm going to discolor 
a few areas that I can see in the reference shots. And that, that adds a lot of interest. There are black and white scratches all over this helmet. And you can accomplish that with your white and black paint and a thin stick like a, a toothpick or an incense stick. Today I'm using a pencil. I've got a sharpened pencil. It's kind of cool because it leaves a little bit of graphite behind too. So I can come in and get some white scratches going. And that's just really easy to do with just a little stick and some paint. To make the leathery tube padding that goes around the perimeter of the edge of the helmet we are using some faux leather and I don't know what you call this this I found this over at Joanne Fabrics it's just a uh, cotton batting in tubular form so we're going to spray 77 the faux leather and then wrap the tube And there you have it. There is your tubular padding. This is used on both the A-wing and the Y-wing. Then I'm going to use contact cement and adhere this inside the edge. Here it is all finished up. This is a piece of baling wire attaching the, the little mic piece. And visor is just trimmed in there and adhered on there with some super glue. I use contact cement to get that ribbing in place and pretty happy with the way this turned out. This was a two day build. Just need to add some padding to the interior and this guy is done. Thanks for watching. If you like this content, make sure to subscribe.